All right, West Tennessee, when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Vicki Lake, and I am the project director, and I am with the West Tennessee Healthcare Foundation in Jackson, Tennessee. My colleagues from our impact council, from our collaborating agencies, are all here today throughout the audience, and I have two of our colleagues here who will help with the question and answers. I want to thank the Tennessee Department of Human Services and this committee for allowing us to be a part of this pilot project and allowing us to present our implementation plan to you. You can see our uh, vision and our um, value proposition where we want to decrease dependency on the state and improve people's situation and end poverty and position people to overcome barriers and reach success. When we did our initial application and continued with our uh, grant application, we have looked at six barriers that we feel for this population. One is a lack of childcare. And when we say childcare, access has been mentioned, but we specifically are looking at infants and toddlers along the way because a lot of uh, the population cannot be successful because of young, young children. We are looking at limited transportation in a rural area. Only one county, Madison, has a Jackson Transit Authority. We have people who don't understand they're not banking, they are underbanked, and we have people who do not understand even how to manage the money that they have. We have ex a limited accessibility, affordable housing. People do not have a primary care home. They are using emergency rooms throughout the area for their primary care, and we need to better link them with primary care in the region. And then lastly, we have low education and workforce development attainment in our area. We are rural West Tennesseans here today that want to work with rural West Tennesseans. We are going to serve the 20 rural counties in West Tennessee. We have two target populations. The first population is people living in poverty and 19% of this area are living in poverty. Then we also want to work with the Alice population. And the Alice population are the working poor. Those are people who make above the poverty level, but under the cost of living in that county. 31% of the people in this area are considered the working poor. So these are our two populations. Again, we are looking at childcare, transportation, financial empowerment, affordable housing, health services and education and workforce development, those are the barriers that we are going to work on. So what, what is our strategy? Our strategy over an 18 month period is to implement family impact centers in all the counties, in most of the counties in rural West Tennessee. These family impact centers will not be freestanding new centers. We are going to locate them and co-locate them with existing entities, family resource centers, community colleges, uh, American job centers. We are going to locate them throughout West Tennessee in those areas. All of them will be staffed by a family champion. The family champion is the first person they will meet. This person will have their back. We learned from interviewing TANF clients, former TANF clients, that that one person who helped them and had their back was important. So this person will do an assessment of them. We will also have financial empowerment counselors that will meet with them and help them with their budgeting, their finances, because that's such a part of this. Um, we have uh, other entities that will help. We will have a career specialist who will come in from the American Job Centers to work with them. We will, through West Tennessee Healthcare, have a parent uh, as teachers home visiting model that will work with families who need in-home work with, 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 to help them. 
The, I will note the family champions and the financial counselors United Way of West Tennessee will be uh, operating those parts. We will be using our human resource agencies and contracting with them to provide transportation in this rural area. We will have mental health professionals who will come in to these family impact centers to work with these clients to help them with any mental health issues they may have or their children. And then lastly, we will have housing navigators. These are provided at no cost to the grant. These are provided by uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development's Continuum of Care for the Homeless housing navigators, and they will come in and work with people who need housing. We also will have a mobile one-stop shop that the clients can use on their phones to get information that we will provide them about the services that we will be having. We do meet uh, three of the TANF alignment. We are aligned with them. We provide assistance to needy families. We, in, we are ending dependence on government benefits through work and job preparation. We want to increase their economic stability. So as you can see, our impact council, the backbone agency is the West Tennessee Healthcare Foundation, and we have six additional agencies, five additional agencies who will be part of this impact council. As you can see on the right-hand side, a number of our letters. We had over 50, I believe 50 letters of support from community agencies. We held three to four Zoom calls throughout the time, the planning time with agencies throughout West Tennessee. So we have a myriad of support for all the components for helping with wraparound services. Our anticipated outcomes, what we have done is we have both process outcomes and then outcomes that show end result. Our process outcomes just look at how many people have we served, but then our our outcomes, our other outcomes, show what is going to happen to these people. It's okay that you serve 200, but what really happened to them? So we have a number of, of outcomes. What we are doing with infant and child care is we are going to provide incentives to local child care agencies to increase the number of infant and toddler slots that they have. They may say they serve infants and toddlers. They only have four slots, and they're full all the time. So what we need to do is increase those slots so this population will have an avenue for child care. Um, we are going to do home repairs for eligible clients that own their homes. We have budgeted for 30 homes a year to provide up to $30,000 in home repair. We also, through the navigators, estimate that 150 to 200 people will be placed in permanent supportive housing through our program. We will um, have, we figure about 200 families will be referred to primary care. We have a number of rural health clinics. We have four or five federally qualified health centers that we have a nonprofit health clinics that we need to, all over West Tennessee, that we need to refer these people to instead of using emergency rooms for primary care. They just don't know where to go. And they need someone to help them get that barrier, and then through our transportation, we'll be able to get them to the clinics. Um, we have financial counselors that will help the people. We will have um, mental health centers, alcohol and drug recovery ports. We have basic access to GED. You know, a lot of these clients just need basic GED to start with before they can even move into a technical college, uh, the College of Applied Technology, and, or to a community college or to a four-year school. They need basic GED, and it's provided free, but we need to make sure they get connected to that. One other thing, we realize that a lot of this population may have a felony. So what we want to do is within the first six months to the end of the first year, develop a list of felony-friendly employers so that when we sit and work with these people, we will know what employers to match their skill or their education or helping them to an employer that is friendly to felons and will work with them. 
So in our budget, I want to say, first off, on our budget, the, the West Tennessee Healthcare Foundation is not going to claim any indirect cost in our application. None. All our funding will go to direct services. The foundation is hiring several staff to oversee the work, but all of that will be a direct cost. Most of our expenses are contracts that we will have with our partners. Our partners provide transportation, home visiting, financial empowerment, uh, the family champions, a lot of the childcare incentives. We have most of our money is going to go to work with our partners who know West Tennessee as well to serve this, this po our, pop our two populations. Now, if you look at the in-kind support that we have, our impact council all is are all giving our time. The housing navigators is about a $200,000 commitment for their time from, from our Continuum of Care HUD grant that we have in West Tennessee. The career specialists that we will have to come meet with the people from the American Job Centers. We have community colleges, the TCATs, adult education colleges and universities who will be giving their time. And then Pathways Behavioral Health Services has a Tennessee Resilience Program that they have received funding through the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services that will be coming as well as other mental health professionals to come to our impact centers to provide services. So those will be in kind to this larger project. How are we going to sustain this? Um, as you, many of you know, the Ford Motor Company is coming to West Tennessee to employ about 6,500 people for their new Blue Oval plant. When we did our research in planning this, we understand the Ford Foundation has funded these same family impact centers in Detroit, all through Detroit. So we have been in preliminary discussions with them in the long term because they're not scheduled to, I think, open 2025 and then scheduled to really be fully staffed a couple of years after that. So we are talking to them about helping us sustain these family impact centers based on their prior experience in Detroit and the applications would be to the Ford Foundation, as we understand. So in summary, we would like West to Tennessee. We like to play this uh, short video for you that uh, summarizes our whole project and gives you an uh, ideal picture of what this will look like. West Tennessee families face a number of pressing issues. Their median household income significantly trails the rest of the state. Almost half of families are Alice or living in poverty. 48% of the population lives in a childcare desert and 81% are income eligible for federal nutrition programs. And then there's the cliff effect. As families increase their earnings with a new job, assistance with childcare or other services, they are often too quickly stripped of the benefits that provided them a safety net, plunging them back into instability. That's why a cross-sector of organizations have partnered together to develop the West Tennessee Dream Initiative, a regional strategy designed to address pressing issues within the community, such as lack of access to childcare, affordable housing, health services, and transportation, while increasing financial empowerment and access to education and workforce development. West Tennessee Dream will enable us to create a more effective and efficient system of care within the region. Empower West Tennessee families to pursue their dreams. I want to thank you. Uh, we'll take questions. Uh, remembering that West Tennessee Dream, we want to develop, we want to reach, empower, assist, and motivate. So thank you, and we'll take your questions. Got a couple. <clears throat> uh, first, um, Housing navigators are only as good as the housing stock. Uh, so is there some aspect of this to encourage building more affordable housing? Uh, it, uh, otherwise, all the navigators in the world aren't going to be able to place somebody. That's the first question. Uh, second, uh, similarly, 
uh, do you have the permanent supportive housing in place now? I've done a lot of work with permanent supportive housing, and it's very expensive. So uh, do you have it in place so that people will have a place to go, or is this something that will have to be developed during the course of your program? And then finally, you mentioned the benefits, Cliff. And by the way, you're the only people so far have mentioned housing, so I, I really dig that. Uh, but the, uh, uh, have, do you have an approach to addressing the benefits, Cliff, that you just uh, showed? Absolutely, great question. So uh, to the first, uh, yes, we actually have a collaborative uh, in West Tennessee that has been meeting uh, really since the Ford announcement um, because we recognize how uh, much that's gonna transform West Tennessee. Uh, and so we have to have that housing stock ready. Um, and so those conversations are happening currently, um, and we're seeing investors beginning to come in into West Tennessee uh, to, be, to begin to build that stock. Um, to that second question, um, while there are, uh, uh, as was mentioned, our housing navigators, uh, one of their key components um, is to connect them uh, with, uh, so primarily it's gonna be coming from Tennessee Homeless Solutions. Um, so they're gonna be connecting them to uh, those partners, such as Jackson Housing Authority, the Dyersburg Housing Authority. There were several of those listed on that partner screen. Uh, and so we have key partners in uh, with them who will be keeping them up to date on what stock is already available. Um, and then remind me, please, of the third question. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things that uh, is unique to our particular uh, proposal are our financial empowerment center counselors. Um, and so those individuals will utilize the cliff dashboard that's been created by the Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank um, to actually guide families through that process. So let me kind of break that down uh, a little bit. Um, and so as we know, if a family signs up uh, for our program, to access benefits such as Families First or Smart Steps. Well, if we're actually successful in what we're doing and guiding them through this on their journey, they're gonna hit that cliff at some point, right? Those benefits are gonna go away. Well, with the dashboard, our counselors can actually help them know when that cliff is coming. So we can actually look out 12 to 24 months and say, this is when that cliff is gonna come. Here's how we're gonna provide all these other wraparound services and support for you to plan for that and to be able to get through that season um, with the support that you need. Or it is what, um, what from your perspective is different or innovative about West Tennessee Dream than the current, than the current order? Yeah, absolutely. So when we think about collective impact, Part of what collective impact requires is that there is a common agenda, that we all agree on what the problems are, and that we're all working towards a common solution. Um, and what we've realized through partnering together over the last several months is that all of us have provided great services from our own individual organizations, but we haven't been as effective or as efficient as we could be. And that's gonna be what's different now with West Tennessee Dream, is that we're partnering all across the region in an effective and efficient way, communicating, uh, setting the agenda, uh, having a backbone agency that facilitates that every single day, that's what they wake up to do, uh, to guide that process. Uh, but then the other piece is the, fin uh, the family impact centers, the one-stop shop locations. There's nothing like that that has existed. As many of you know, right now, how the process works, if I wanna come and, and uh, get access to SNAP benefits, I have to come over here. But then I also have issues with transportation. Well, I gotta go get a bus pass over there. Oh, well, I have this work thing, I gotta go over here. Now we're providing one-stop shop locations where that all happens in one place for a family. They're not being bused all over the place, uh, riding on the, a bus for eight hours of the day, trying to get something done that would take 30 minutes. Gotcha. And um, the second part of this for me is that you speak um, in a compelling way to really referral, connecting, and leverage. What I didn't hear a lot of is what, what defines success of this from, from your perspective? I think what defines success is uh, what DHS is looking for itself, which is that because we can use that dashboard, because we can have those wraparound services, we can actually get people off of government dependency. That's success. Success is moving them from where they are to a job opportunity, to education, to childcare, to all of those other pieces, 
temporarily, right? We're providing that temporarily. So it's a short-term solution for a long-term success for families. Um, and so that's the piece that I think is very different for us is that we ultimately, our chief goal of all of this is to actually help people get on their feet. Hey, Lisa Piercy, um, obviously I'll have to recuse myself from this one based on my, um, my, based on my history, but one comment, one question. Uh, the comment is, um, as Jerry talked about, you're the first one to talk about housing, you're also the first one to talk about home visiting. And from a, both a pediatric and a public health standpoint, home visiting is one of the most evidence-based uh, programs, not only for child development, but reduction in child abuse, job placements for moms, early childhood development and health. So thank you for including that. My question is, how do people learn about these family centers and how did they get there? That's great. That's almost a setup, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I, I promise. So, nobody told me to ask that. So um, I think that that's the other thing uh, to go back as well of what's innovative about our approach is the first place of contact will be home visitors that will be connected with new mothers and new families at clinics and at hospitals when those babies are on their way to being born and when they're born. The second place of connection will be through those family champions, which if we miss them when they've been born, we catch them when they're signing up for child care. And we're catching them then and wrapping them in. And then the third place of con connection and contact and referral will be all of our wraparound partners. It's our collective impact mission. All of those partners will then be making referrals directly to our services uh, from the, the rest of the rural counties. And that's why having those family impact centers located regionally is so important because it makes those connections easy. Uh, with our partners from uh, the human resource agencies providing transportation, we can ensure, generally speaking, that no one will be more than about 20 minutes away from one of our family impact centers. Um, and that also makes it innovative and unique. Thank you very much. Talk a little bit more about that. Your slide that shows a, a, a someone holding a cell phone in the online app. How are we going to make these devices available to families? What is, is there a funding mechanism in there to allow technology to come into these families uh, to, to stay connected with their family champion? And I've got a follow-up, too. Yeah, absolutely. I actually think that that's one of the biggest uh, uh, misconceptions and one of the most common myths. In our research and uh, interviewing our families, almost everyone has a cell phone. They have devices. They have access. That's not missing. What is missing is what we're proposing here, which is a simple solution to let them know where their resources are. And so one of the things that we found in West Tennessee over several years, uh, we always produce um, these resource guides. Well, the problem is, is that the resource guide is obsolete two weeks after it's produced because things change. So having an online version of that keeps it up to date. Uh, we have partners already, it already actually exists. Um, and so it's already there, uh, ready to serve families. Um, and then the second, what was the second question again? I haven't asked it yet. Okay, there uh, we the, go. The, the follow-up, uh, and you saw this, show the slide on Blue Oval City, and legislatively we have embraced what's coming with, with Ford Motor Company and the opportunities there for West Tennessee and the region. You mentioned the partnership that Ford has in Detroit. Give me an idea of what the outcomes have been in their prior partnerships with, uh, with entities in, uh, in Michigan. Yeah, so they have two uh, uh, impact centers uh, or family resource centers is what they call them, them in Detroit. Um, they also have one, I believe, is, uh, in um, Singapore. Uh, and so this was something that they initiated. The first uh, center in Detroit was created in 2013. Um, and so since that time, they've seen an uh, increased number of students enrolled in early childhood education. They've seen also uh, returns on investment as it pertains to their high school population and the students they serve there with increased numbers of children going to uh, graduating and then also going on to secondary uh, educational opportunities. Um, and then they've also seen through their wraparound services, people accomplishing exactly what we're looking to, to do, which is less people depending on government dependence uh, for resources and benefits. You're doing a great job and hate to monopolize the time, but the, and I'm very intrigued, the early, early age child care, as the young lady had mentioned before, uh, the, the early child, early age child care. Is there an educational component to that? And are you working with 
private daycares? Are you working within Head Start programs? What What's the model for that? And I'll so show you. Tennessee uh, TQE Tennessee for Quality Early Education is one of our key partners. Um, actually, uh, we have one of the only Bright Start fellows. We have the only Bright Start fellow in West Tennessee. So we've already been working for the past year to build a network, uh, what we call the Bright Start West Tennessee Network. Um, and so one of the things that we've discovered, uh, and we've known this for a while, actually I spent two and a half years in the early childhood space, um, is that we have a severe lack of centers, as was mentioned earlier. To give an example of that, in Madison County alone, uh, back in 2001 when DHS began to track licensed child care centers, there were 83. Today in Madison County, there are 23. And so there's been a significant decrease in these child care centers. So part of what we're doing is partnering with Dyersburg State, which has a TECTA program, Jackson State Community College as well, to in, uh, incentivize and encourage more people to go into that field um, so that we can then turn around and create more centers uh, so that there are more options for families. Um, and so that's a key part. The other part that we're doing through the Bright Start West Tennessee Network is also incentivizing those centers themselves by helping them uh, uh, attain high quality training for the educators they already have. Um, and so that will look like a $10,000 a year incentive um, for them to be a part of this network, uh, to partner with us, to increase the number of slots that they have, but also to provide greater training for their teachers and also to serve as mentors for new uh, in people interested in starting new centers. This is where uh, Commissioner McCord sings. Is this the karaoke part of the? You're going to have to move away from the lights. Okay. <laughs> All right. So just to comment, I applaud the um, connection with Ford because that's the first time we've heard that too, and it has a potential for being a prosperity engine for West Tennessee as well. And they. All indications are they're going to be a wonderful corporate citizen there, and to engage that is is very good. And I think as we close, you know, as we talk about Ford, the largest single industry investment in the history of our state, uh, it will transform West Tennessee. And so there is a two-gen approach to this, uh, as you've seen, primarily because we have to prepare our West Tennessee workforce for that coming investment. And then we have to make sure that it's successful once it's here. Um, so as we close, I want to point out um, that our theory of change is located in our logo. Um, you see two children holding hands together, uh, and it forms a W. And you see the adult over them with a T. Because at West, in West Tennessee, we believe that in order to create change, we have to go uh, be hand in hand, and we have to wrap our arms around our most vulnerable. Thank you.